Today we're going to draw a fig, and I will show you a photo that I found in a second. Um, but first I wanted to show you that since my last tutorial I updated Procreate, and now there's a much larger selection of tools than there were before, and the, there are more categories as well. You can see they're divided by your standard tools, and then they get a little bit more um, intricate and artistic and artsy later, but we'll go through some of them later. But I just wanted to let you know that if you haven't updated Procreate in a while, you should do so before your next illustration. So the reason I chose Fig is because I think there's a lot of interesting textures in it. Um, and this gives us the chance to um, use smooth tools for the underlay. And you'll see the textures on top are fuzzy and kind of almost skin-like. Um, you can find really nice photos in cookbooks or books about food because they usually show really detailed photographs in those books. All right. Okay, so first I'm going to start with a pencil drawing. I'm going to choose the 6B pencil because that's what I normally draw with when I'm not on the iPad. Next we're going to um, isolate the shape, so make a new layer. We're going to bring, we're going to hit the select tool there, and now the best we can we're going to outline it. And it's, remember, if you have a shaky hand, it's better to go a little outside the lines than inside the lines, because when we're finished we can shave off the excess with the eraser tool. Alright, now we're going to hit the plus sign here, and that isolates the shape. And now we are going to make the pencil line invisible there. Okay. So when we look at the fig, we're going to start with a lighter color underneath. And the more layers you create, kind of more in-depth the, the image looks and... Um, it just has more of a realistic aesthetic to it. So we're going to start with the light color, the light purples in there. Let's try to find a good shade here. So that's pretty, pretty similar. We're going to go lighter. And let's find a tool here. Um, I'm going to go with something pretty subtle and that makes a really good underlay is this bonobo chalk. There you go. Okay, now remember low opacity to start and larger brush. And that's a little too low of opacity. Let's go over it like that. So that's a nice underlay for our fig. Now we're going to go slightly darker and slightly um, darker shade too. So darker tone and darker opacity. Now we're going to stop with the purple for a second because we're going to look at the fig again and see that there's some green undertones here as well. So they're kind of light, um, light green, almost a white. So we're going to change our color. Kind of go this really light sage there. And I'm going to do a new layer just in case I mess up and it's always safe to do that. I'm going to stay with the same texture and I'm going to um, decrease the size of the tool. And 
And I remember that there's kind of ridges in the fig, in the fig. And so I'm going to make kind of streaks like this. So this might actually be a good time to draw in the lines that we see on the fig. So let's go to a new layer. I'm going to go back to this purple color and I'm going to do that by just putting my finger on um, the shade that I have already and you see how it changes the color up there. I'm going to go darker. And I'm going to take, use a different tool this time. Let me look. Let me inspect it a little bit. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try this crayon, but I'm gonna make it um, pretty narrow. So I did create a new layer. Okay. like that. This one. It all goes to the same point. Nice thing about these natural contours in the fig is that it creates more of a, a sense of depth to it. Okay. Now I'm going to Increase the size a little bit, decrease the opacity. Also, if you draw on the side of your pencil here, just as if it was a real pencil, it makes a wider, a wider line. I'll do it really quickly and just here, look at that versus the beautiful thing about this pencil is that it really mimics a real one. So I'm gonna go back, just wanted to show you that. Okay. So I'm gonna start another new layer just because. And I'm gonna to start to get a little bit rougher to look like the actual fig color down here. Plus darker. Um, let's see, what would be a good brush for this? Let's look at our fig. What do we think? Something charcoaly. So oil pastel actually here. Oh, look. Oil pastel kind of mimics charcoal. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that one. Okay. There's a lot of shadow down here. It's actually getting pretty dark and I'm going to make this wider. Okay, now this charcoal, the it has a little bit too much tooth to it, so I'm going to change my tool because I'm not that happy with it. I want something a little bit less uh, the teeth are kind of closer together. So let's try the soft pastel and see if we like that. Yeah, I do like that better. It's really dark down here, so. All right, 
Okay. I'm just going to go back and forth and kind of play with more layers and work with more colors until I can want to continue on to the next step. Okay, what I was doing was just kind of building the purples and the greens on top of each other. Um, just going back and forth and back and forth, kind of building texture and um, uh, colors and tones on top of each other just to create more depth in the fig. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and further darken these ridges there. So I'm going to go back, let's get that color, go darker, and just start really committing to it here. Plus, I'm going to change my tool. I think I want to do a somewhat more opaque tool, or, or less toothy. So let's go to the crayon and see how we like that. Opaque. The bottom of the fig in the picture is super, super dark, so I'm not afraid to every time I make a stroke just to kind of reinforce that. Oops, I guess I don't want to do that. See, lots of undo. It's a beautiful thing about this iPad is that you do not have to erase. No erase marks. Now this up top here, it's not so much purple and it's not so much green, it just kind of becomes a nondescript color. So I'm going to just put purple on top of green because in school you learn that coloring purple and green together makes brown. And by school I mean kindergarten. Back to our dark purple. I think the tool I'm going to go to is I'm going to go back, or I'm going to go to shading graphite here. I like that one. That looks kind of similar. Yeah, it's a little smoother, less toothy. Reinforce those ridges.
So do you see how there's this also this kind of line here where this is much more in shadow than that. So what I like to do is get a new tool, use a low opacity and just kind of make a wash there. So again, I'm going to use, um, I think the Bonobo low opacity. Okay. And it was kind of like this. Oh, you know what? New layer. Okay. Now I step back and look at it and it kind of looks like someone threw this fig on the floor. It's looking a little mushy. And I think the reason for that is that there, this is not gradual enough. And this, there's, there's too much differentiation between the light and the dark. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to fix that. So I'm going to have to go back a few steps. I'm going to hit pause just so I can work through this a little bit. So what I just did was just to round out the ridges by making the, the lines a little bit more gradual and um, less kinked because now it looks like it's a whole round fig and not mushy. So the next step is the fun part. You're going to make the last and top most um, texture there where you see the little speckles and the little furs. So, so I'm going to look for a brush stroke that's kind of speckled that would mimic the fuzzy texture on top of the fig. So I happened to find one that I liked under Elements and Driven Snow. So we're going to try that one. I do like that. However, I think I'd like it to be a little less uh, um, sharp. It's a little distracting on the fig. It's not like that in real life. So let's go back. Lower the opacity. Let's try it again. Okay. Yeah, I like that. put a little down here but really it's more visible where the light shining on the fig Oops. so the next step is we want to clean up the fig and um, fix the shape of it a little bit so while this fig that we have a photo of is um, it's kind of invisible down here but you can see from all the other ones the shape kind of comes in a little bit so we assume it's the same as for that one so let's fix that shape and we're going to shave it and the reason that I merged all of the layers is so that when we erase it all of the layers get erased at the same time otherwise we'd have to erase every single layer so let's get a nice clean tool here use the monoline under the eraser Here's the middle point right there. So now we have our basic body of our fruit. And what we're going to do is um, the last step is to create a shadow. So what I'm going to do is since I am happy with the um, texture on top, I'm going to merge these two layers by tapping, merge down. And now I'm going to turn the fig so that it's facing upwards, just like it would in real life. So I'm going to hit the arrow. And I'm just going to twist it like this. Okay. Oops. Open a new layer. And I make shadows in um, three layers. Like a light layer that's wider. And then I get, um, as I get closer to the fig, um, I decrease the brush stroke and increase the opacity. So the brush that I like to use for shadows is Bonobo Chalk. We have the black there. Okay, so we have our large brush and our low opacity. And since the light source is coming from this angle, okay, 
shadow will be over here. So light here, shadow there. also need to make sure that this layer is underneath the fig, so you press and hold, pull that underneath, and then I'm going to move the shadow up a little bit. There we go. Fix the shadow. Want it to be a little bit wider. All right, and there we have our fig. I hope you enjoy using your Procreate app and thanks for watching.